We in this theater share something pretty epic in common, having endured a hair-raising hurricane season. In addition to a big storm surge, Hurricane Irma dumped 12 inches of rain on Jacksonville in one weekend, and that was on top of your rainiest summer in recorded history. Yet, even with our flooded homes, our downed trees, now the mold, even with moccasins still swimming through some of Florida's subdivisions, that foot of rain paled to the more than four feet that drowned Texas in Hurricane Harvey. With more than 50 inches in a week, Harvey shattered every U.S. rainfall record for a single storm. So we in the media and meteorologists like to call these storms beasts, as if they rose from the pages of a fairy tale. Actually, they rose from warm seawater. And as our oceans continued to heat up along with the planet, scientists worry that climate change could be increasing the risks of these kinds of storms. So not that we would see more storms, the problem is more intense ones and more intense impacts such as these kinds of rain events. In his new film on the climate crisis, An Inconvenient Sequel, Al Gore calls these sorts of rains that have drowned cities from Baton Rouge to Bangladesh rain bombs. So the reason climate change is making rain fall more severe is that a warmer atmosphere holds more water. So this makes sense, right? This is not uncertain science by any means. It's clear in the rainfall record now going back 50 years. But having spent many years of my life researching the history of humanity and rainfall, I literally wrote the book on rain. <laughs> I am here to tell you that the rain is not a beast or bomb. Nature and climate are not what we have to fear. So today, I'm here to tell you another side to the story of rain and to clear up some misunderstandings, some of which may be coming back to haunt us in an era of climate change. But the first misunderstanding is very small, and this involves the shape of a raindrop. So from our earliest childhood, we imagine raindrops falling this way, right? Like a drip from the faucet. But this image is actually upside down. In reality, raindrops fall like this. They're tiny parachutes. Their tops rounded by air pressure from below. So rain has this really unfair reputation, right, of making the world dull and gray. From the very first rains that filled the oceans, tinting our planet blue, the truth is quite the opposite. Rain gives life, then blazes it with color. So the better the spring rains, the brighter the hills and valleys. The steadier summer rains fall on hardwood trees, the richer the reds and yellows of fall. We can even thank the rain for the bluest blues in the sky as dust, pollution, and other tiny particles build up in the atmosphere. Our celestial sphere grows paler and paler from blue to milky white. And it's a good rain that washes that grit away, sort of shining the heavens to their blue celeste best. So dearth of rain means dearth of color dry prairie, dusty sand, desert animals with pale skin to reflect the sun's heat. Many tropical rainforest creatures evolved bright pigments so their kind could find them in the rain-blurred jungle. This is an African butterfly called the squinting bush brown. When it emerges from the pupa in dry times, it's dull and puny but those that emerge in rainy season 
are larger, eat more food, have big, beautiful eye spots, and they even get more sex. <laughs> It turns out that we humans, too, are adapted to rain. Scientists link the wrinkles that rise on our fingers and toes after a good soak to our ancestors' need to grip in wet rainforests. Our finger wrinkles are essentially rain treads. So to a remarkable extent, rain, and often the lack of rain, has brought us together as humans. A widespread and lengthy drought helped spur the earliest civilizations as people had to come together to irrigate and grow food in these four great river valleys. So rain and the lack helped shape humans from the very beginning, and from the very beginning, humans wanted to shape the rain, right, to control it. In Mesopotamia, one of the very first gods known to have been worshipped by humans was a deity of storms and rain. Most religions came to view rain as a gift from God. In Hinduism, the beloved god Krishna is blue to represent a rainstorm. His name literally means dark as a storm cloud. Source of life-giving water, rain is indeed a gift. But whenever we viewed rain, weather, climate as an enemy to vanquish, we often came to regret it. In medieval Europe, the 1300s marked the start of this incredible climate shift to extreme weather, including some of the worst rains in a thousand years. Season after season, crops were destroyed, starvation set in, empty bellies filled with paranoia, people began to believe that witches were conjuring the storms. And this went on for a couple of centuries There were actually thousands of people tortured and even executed for a crime on the books called weather magic. In Scotland, King James himself oversaw some of the most heinous torture and executions. He was paranoid that witches were trying to kill him by storm. This 1591 news tract tells the story from King James's point of view, proving, if nothing else, that fake news has been around for many centuries. <laughs> so this sort of delusional determination to get the upper hand over nature repeats throughout history. In 19th century America, thousands of farmers and families rushed west to the Great Plains. They were drawn by the Homestead Act, but also a bogus theory called rain follows the plow. Boosters, ignoring the dry climate history, or probably hiding the dry climate history, actually convinced many people that the more people moved to the plains, the more it would rain. And this was the propaganda that was seen in magazines all over the country with with rain and fat grapes in Kansas. So inevitably, drought returned. Thousands of families had to retreat back east. Those who stayed to wait for rain went hungry, some starved to death. And into this grim situation came some of the most audacious con men in American history, these were the traveling rainmakers. And for a high price, they would convince farmers, they even convinced farmers they could blast rain out of the sky with mortars meant for war. Congress even funded rainmaking by cannon blast at the behest of wealthy ranchers over the objections of federal meteorologists who knew it was hokum and said so. It was neither the first nor the last time politicians would listen to the influential ill-informed over their own scientists. <laughs> But again, rain is not the stuff 
of bombs. Nature and climate are not what we have to fear. Rather, that's human action. Death, as water shows its other face, hideous, unrelenting, shrieking its rage, the vicious scourge of mankind. So in 1950, the Army Corps of Engineers put out this propaganda film, Waters of Destiny, all about the glorious replumbing of the Florida Everglades to save South Floridians from the vicious scourge of mankind that was water and rainfall. But of course, the folly to conquer the Everglades left South Floridians vulnerable to this day. This vast wetland once absorbed all of the region's rainfall and storm energy, but now we've paved over most of the places where flood water wants to rush in a storm. But guess what? The flood waters are still rushing to those places. And these photographs weren't hurricane photographs. These are just rainfall photographs in South Florida in, a, in changing climate. So these are our stories. And for me, they really raise questions for the stormy times we find ourselves in. Will we repeat the folly of fighting climate with concrete? Will we listen to the influential, ill-informed over our own scientists? Will we follow a paranoid king down a dangerous path? Again, nature and climate are not what we have to fear. When it comes to climate change, it's human action, and more importantly, lack of action. Again, the link between extreme rain and climate change is not uncertain science. It's actionable science. For every degree the planet warms, rains can be expected to get about 10% more extreme. So just like our ancestors came together in those four great river valleys to save themselves in the epic drought, it is time for us to come together as people to stave off human misery. So the most important thing we can do is prevent future warming, and that means lowering the carbon emissions that are heating the planet. The second part of that equation is to make our city safer, right? But this time, let's work with rain rather than against it. Brilliant people all over the world and here in Florida, they are showing us how to do this stuff. In the Northeast, coastal wetlands saved $625 million in property damage during Superstorm Sandy. A rain revolution underway in Los Angeles is creating permeable roads, permeable parking lots, and these vast natural catchment areas so that rain will flow back into the aquifer where it belongs rather than flooding people's homes in storms or being washed out to sea in huge culverts during droughts when they could really use that precious rainwater. Well, I hope I've helped you see another side to the story of rain, and even to imagine how we might turn it from foe to friend. For the rain is not the beast or bomb. Nature and climate are not what we have to fear. That would be us. Thank you.